All righty, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Not a, not often that I get to say that on one of our broadcasts here. We've got an 11-15 tip-off for you down in Buda, Texas, a game between the Hayes Hawks and the Anderson Trojans. Hayes, this will be the first time that these two teams play with a new nickname for this Hayes team. Last year, these two played at the Burger Center. A lot of fun there. But now, getting to come in and see the shiny new gym, all the fresh coats of paint, given that this is the first season. Everything looks so crisp and clean and, and new. I love it. Still sticking with the red, white, and blue. They're just opting for a little bit more alliteration in their lives. But the Trojans coming off their biggest win of the season, just a dominant showing, putting up 84 points against Austin High. Now, we're having a lot of trouble here connecting in the gym today. And our hotspot not being too kind right now. Everything looks like it's holding okay, but if uh, the broadcast starts cutting out, just know that we are operating with quite literally one bar on the hotspot. And if we can't connect to the internet, we can't really stream. But for now, things seem to be holding. Feels like the the, uh, the stream always takes a dip once you finally start the game. It'll, it'll, it'll get you the warm-ups, though. But uh, we will post the replay uh, as soon as we possibly can uh, after the game if we do indeed Im experience some disruptions in the continuity of the stream. But for now, things seem to be holding, and we are hopeful that everything will be smooth sailing going on. My name's Jack Farrell, always Happy to bring you some Trojan basketball. Should be another one. It's our last game until Tuesday. It's the last game of the non-district slate, I believe, for Anderson, other than one more tournament out in Round Rock, but we will not be broadcasting those games. We will uh, have the next game on Tuesday at home against Lhasa. So Anderson will open up district play with one of the weaker teams in district, at least by the last couple seasons mark. Of course, they very newly even ha just have sports at Lhasa, breaking off from, uh, I believe, LBJ, who just lost in the state championship for football. I think they lost to Smithville. But not talking about that. We're talking about Hayes. This is a team that comes in with a pretty similar record to Anderson. They are 8-7 and seven right now. Anderson, of course, comes in at 9-7 and seven with the win last night. But we are just about ready to go here. Going to go ahead and throw it down to our PA once again, 11-15 tip-off, and if we do experience any interruptions uh, based on our streaming capability, we will be posting um, the replay very soon after the game ends. Should be okay. Um, would feel a whole lot worse about it if we were streaming tonight and you would have to wait until the morning, but maybe you can tune in on our replay after the game. Should be. We're looking good right now, though, so hopefully you can just keep it riding I'm going to go ahead and throw it down to the PA now. We'll get our national anthem as well as our starting lineups. Never mind. No pomp, no circumstance. Here in Buda, we are just hopping right on into things. No lineups or nothing. And on our Hayes roster, didn't quite get uh, first names. So Bruce will be the one to do the jump ball. Barker also starting for Hayes. Number 13, Martinez. Number 3, Burks. And finally rounding it out is number 3, or 23, excuse me, Sice. Oh, no, excuse me. That's, uh, that's Clements. Clements with a T. Now they've got the ball on the wing. It's Barker. Now back up top, it's Bruce. Make sure we've got the roster all worked out. Here's Martinez on the wing. Whitlow defending. We're launching right into it, getting started just a couple seconds early. Yeah, okay. Got our roster all worked out. It's been a pretty frantic morning for us here, finally settling in and starting up the broadcast. So here's Burks on the wing for Anderson. It's Wagner defending him. Flip this off. Here we go, back into the court. <laughs> Here's Barker. Now Burke's driving in. He loses it. It's taken away by Blackerby, and Bennett loses it right back, but he's going to get called for, uh, well, he is fouled, excuse me. Bruce came in from behind. It's Bennett drawing the foul. So far, the stream's still holding. That pregame moniker out of here. Because we are into the heart of it. 
Now here's Francis on the wing for Anderson. Now Wagner driving in, kicks to the corner. It's an open look for Jack. He can't knock his first attempt of the game down. Anderson, of course, rocking with the same starting lineup they've gone with throughout the season. It's Langley, Wagner, Whitlow, Blackaby, and, of course, Jack Francis. Now here comes Burks driving in. He's cut off by Wagner. He'll pull it back out. Now they get it into the post. It's 10 on 10. Bruce going at Blackerby. Now an open look on the wing for Barker, and that's good. So Hayes opens things up uh, as far as scoring goes, and this one's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Anderson's way. Actually kind of incredulous that it's even holding. It's <laughs> literally on one bar. I can't even open Twitter on my phone. Here's Whitlow fading to the corner. That's that play again. They've been using that for, uh, for a while in Coach Pittsford's tenure, and you get a lot of open corner threes, and that's the best shot in basketball. It's a three, but by distance it's shorter than all the others, and this is a takeaway by Francis coming the other way. Gets the basket. Can't finish it. Short arms it a little bit. He gets his own board with Whitlow right there. And now Jack opens things up for himself. He's got two. Whitlow has three. Anderson's got five. 5-3 five, here early. With the ball on the wing is Martinez. He gets it back outside to Clements. Looking for Burke. Burks, excuse me. That's going to be troublesome. It's the, it's the NBA Alec Burks and Trey Burke thing. I always get those guys confused. But it's Burks, and he's working his way around the perimeter. Francis defending the much smaller guard. They get it into the post. It's not quite a size mismatch. Bruce and Langley. Now here we go. It's Martinez. Screen comes. Like a double drag screen there. Now back outside for Burks. Although maybe not quite. Usually you get those with a little more motion on the wing. But here's Burks. Working his way around the perimeter. Francis doing a good job of cutting him off, but he splits the double team and gets the layup. That's a nice move from the small guard underneath to tie the game up at five apiece. And they've already got some light bulbs out on the scoreboard. The one that says Hawks. So it's got to be a pretty new scoreboard. Here's Whitlow into the corner for Langley. Hit one early in the first quarter yesterday, and he does again. Nate Langley coming off his return after missing... Uh, effectively three whole games for Anderson. He came back in a big way, scored 14 points. It's now 5-8. Anderson pulling up into a three is Barker, and he's got another one. So early, Barker has two threes, and he's been the offense for them so far. Now we're tied up at eight apiece. Four minutes to go left in the first. So Whitlow inbound, gets it into Jack. Once again, if you're just joining us, having a little bit of trouble with connectivity. So uh, if you experience any disruptions with your stream, we will try and get the replay posted as soon as we can this afternoon as Langley uh, overthrow. So Burks will bring it up. He's got two points. They've got Barker, the sharpshooter, has been the one to keep it close early. He's got six points. Now here's Burks on the wing, Langley and defending him. Now they're just working it around the perimeter trying to get something, but here's Barker. I'm sure he's going to look for another three. Francis picks him up. Now here he comes working, away, uh, excuse me, working his way around the left side. He's going to pull up from the top of the key. That's going to be short. Rebound goes underneath to Obaro, who's just checked into the game. Burks is going to flick one up. No good. Rebound Langley, and he will hold it and get it to Wagner. Now Wagner going to push it ahead to Whitlow. Whitlow drives into the lane, going to get up into the air, kick out to Francis. Now Jack's going to reset, but Mike left him open. Got it. Mike Wagner hitting from downtown, and both teams knocking down a few threes early. Burks driving in. Gets it inside, and losing it is Bruce, and that's going to go out of bounds. So Trojans have it up by three. 
High scoring first. Francis kicks it. Wagner back to Francis. Looks like that could have been, was very nearly an over, the, over and back, but Blackerby has it. He's going to take it to the basket, and they're going to call that an offensive foul. Blackerby doesn't like the call, but anytime you see an official start to wind up, they're going to put on a little show and call the charge. 2.41 left. We'll go in as a turnover for Anderson. Still no team fouls, but that's the first on Bennett. Here's Burks. Gets it over to number 15, Hernandez, on the wing, and for the first time, here's Bruce. Kicks it across. It's Hernandez again. Burks, Obara comes and sets the screen. Burks coming around it, getting all the way to the basket. Campbell Duncan in the game now for Anderson. Passing ahead to Blackerby's Francis. Bennett all the way to the basket and finally misses one at the rim. It's blocked by uh, Bruce. This one knocked into the air. Bennett going to lose this one out of bounds. He tips it out. Anderson was, uh, they have a player, Anderson, number two. That was who was in on the play. So number two for Hayes is Anderson as well as uh, the Trojans are Anderson. But Black are we going to check out after taking that spill. Corey Price into the ball game now. They're going to get Langley back in for Whitlow. So now it's Wagner, Langley, Francis, the three starters, along with Campbell Duncan and Corey Price. Here's Burks. They get it into the elbow. Now back out to the top of the key, back to Burks. Minute and a half left here in the first. Burke's working his way around, and they're going to get Langley with the uh, with the grab effectively. So it'll stay down here. Shouldn't be shooting. It should be on the floor. And on the floor it is. Now the second team foul going against Anderson. Burke's trying to get the ball inbound, and Jack knocks it out. They were looking for Bruce, but just wasn't there. And it looks like the stream is starting to slip on and off as Anderson has it up top. And they get it back to Burks. So, as we said, go ahead and try and find the replay after the game, just doing the best we can here. But here's Burks going right at Langley, throws it up over him, and he gets it to go. It's not bad defense from Langley. He just made the shot. Now just a one-point game. Here's Campbell Duncan cutting to the basket, into the corner, another try for Langley, and he's got two triples here in the first quarter. Nate Langley, six points, and Anderson has its largest lead of the night. Morning, excuse me. Very few day games in my time at this, uh, at this company. Driving in, they get it back to Hernandez. Now it's Obara, Burks, and they're holding it for a bit. 50 seconds left in the quarter. Don't imagine they'll hold this long for a final shot. But Obara has it in the corner. They get it back to Burks, and it looks like they might be doing just that. Obara comes cutting. Now back outside to Hernandez. And now Anderson with it on the wing into the corner for Obara. Here's Burks. Get it into Bruce. Now Burks has it. 23 seconds left on the clock. He's isolated out on Langley. Not much of a mismatch. And now they will pull back and hold for the final shot. It's 10 seconds left in the quarter. Burks dribbling around a screen, getting to the basket. Gets under Francis and gets that to go. He's got a way around the rim. Now four seconds left for Wagner. Skip across to Francis. They'll have a good look at it. He gets in. Going to take it all the way up. Lays it up and under. Can't get it to go. And no buzzer at the end of the quarter, but we ran out of time. So Hayes with only two people in the scoring column. It's Burks and Barker both with six. It's 12 to 14 after one. Anderson with the lead. Nate Langley leading the way for the Trojans with six. Mike Wagner and Mitchell Whitlow both have three. Francis with a layup of his own. So with that, going to go ahead and take our first break of the ball game. Trojans have a lead after one. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE dot Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another verse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 
16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh my god, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one! Bravo to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back in on the broadcast. Want to thank our sponsor uh, today. For your Trojans, our logo sponsors, Howie Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech. And for us here on Vipe, it's Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport with Academy Sports and Outdoors. You can shop in-store or online at academy.com, and you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. And here we go, quarter number two. So it's Colin Page into the game for the first time for the Trojans. He gets a shot at the rim, and he gets it to go. Colin Page, a bucket getter, had 12 points off the bench yesterday. A season high for him. Now over on the wing, it's Hernandez. Trojans have pushed their lead back a little bit more. Here's Burks. They get it to Obara. Now working around is Medeiros. Medeiros into the lane, kicks it underneath. That's a good find to his size. Now he'll have to kick it back outside to Medeiros. We'll relaunch the stream. Now it's red, so hopefully a little bit better. Here's Burks. Now into the corner. 16-12. Driving in is Medeiros. They get it underneath. Isaias loses it. That one very narrowly missing the baseline, but Anderson will take it as Langley is going to get an opportunity at the other end. The smooth little finger roll. Not sure how he got that to go. Nate Langley, eight points. Fred Dale into the game. Now pulling up and shooting, and that's no good. They're going to get Dale on the foul. So Anderson, once again, a lot of fouls early. Dale picks up his first. That backfield duo of Page and Dale now in the game for the Trojans along with Blackerby, Wagner, and Langley. Three-point shooter usually correlates to a pretty good foul shooter. And Barker has a team high of seven. Francis back in along with Jackson Gill. Wagner and Page are going to get a rest. Two for two from the line for Barker. And they've cut it back down to a four-point game. It'll be a timeout. I'm not sure who called it. I think it was a timeout for Hayes. Yeah, it's a white timeout hearing from the officials here. Got a light crowd on a Saturday morning here in Buda. Going to go ahead and take a quick break here. We'll be right back with more Trojan basketball on Vibe Live. Interested in Vibe Campus? Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vibe Campus today. Back in on the broadcast, Trojans in action. They get it to Gill in the corner. Gill going to drive, and they're going to get him for a travel. Man, the one time Rockets play in the morning, Anderson also is playing in the morning. It's fine. I don't really need to watch that many of those games. They're not very good. But that's what makes it fun, watching young players develop. Love me some Shangoon. So here's Medeiros for Hayes. Medeiros loses his footing, and Blackerby picks it up. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Bennett loves these. He's going to take it all the way in, and he's rejected at the rim, but Gill is there on the follow. Barker gets the block, but it doesn't matter. Jackson Gill with his first basket of the night. Love to see him get some run in the first half. Now driving in is Burks. He's trying to work on Gill. Gill doing a great job staying in front of him, but they fell asleep on the sniper. He's really the only one that's doing anything right now. And they left them open. It's his third three of the game. Cuts the Trojan lead from six to three. Now here's Blackerby pushing the other direction. Get it up to Nate. Now here's Jack working on Burks. Got a lot more size than him. They get Francis fading to the corner. He's not going to take it, and that's going to be a foul. It's 
the right move from Francis. Good job drawing the foul on. I think that's going to go on Bruce. No points for him in the game. He'll head to the bench. Burke's also going to check out. They've brought in Martinez back as well as Obara. Both these teams with a lot of substitutions. Well, here's Francis in the corner. Open look. Jack a little off today on his shooting touch, but still bringing it defensively, of course. And kick it across, and that's just a bad pass out of bounds. And that's not really what you want to see from Barker. Team makes the mistake. You don't have to necessarily show them up. But here's Whitlow. Fortuitous bounce for Anderson, and Armour is blocked at the rim, and that's out of bounds. It'll stay here. Here's Blackaby looking to get it in. They're trying to find Francis. That's a kick ball, but Bennett thankfully gets it back. They get it outside to Whitlow. Mitchell going to drive in, loses it. That's out of bounds, and it'll stay here. Right now it's an even game, and Hayes just getting away with a little bit more contact than Anderson. Bennett looking in. He'll just kick it to the corner for Gill. Gill going to drive in, loses it. And that's, that's how that possession deserved to end for Anderson. They we're not very careful with the ball at any point there, uh, down that trip on the court. Here's Medeiros. Hayes with a chance to tie with a three. He's going to drive in right at Whitlow. Whitlow blocked it, but he right back to him. So one-point game in Buda. Here's Francis driving in, kicks it to Gill, and that's through his hand. So right now, Anderson just can't hold on to the ball. It's a chance for them to take the lead here as it starters minus Langley plus Armour right now. Wagner will come back in for Gill. Halfway through the second. Now into the corner, back up top. Obara, you get it to Medeiros. Now screen coming up top from Clements. Medeiros going to pull up. It's a long two. It's way off. And Whitlow coming in to steal that rebound away. Now he's going to push in transition. It's tipped off the hands of Blackerby, and Anderson just can't stop turning the ball over. Coming fresh off a game last night, and these are two different teams. Anderson could really do no wrong yesterday, and now they can't do much right. But here's Medeiros in a one-point game. Kick it to the corner. It's Barker. He's got a team high of 11. Now back to the corner, it's Martinez. Clements, he's going to drive at Francis, but they'll kick it to Barker. He's fading to the corner, going to step back for three. Acts the long two. That's no good. And that's knocked out of bounds off of Hayes. Got Burks back in. And Langley going to the bench. That's when Anderson's been really at their worst today. Here's Wagner rifling it ahead to Armour. Derek not going to take it. Instead, he's going to find Blackerby, and that's usually a good move, but it's an air ball to Whitlow. Mitchell, good board, can't get the follow. So good process, just bad result for the Trojans right there. Working around is Martinez. You get it to Obara. Now Medeiros on the wing. Gotten a lot of run with the second unit. They hand it off here. It's Hernandez, he's driving in. Blackerby fell down, and that's just going to be an open look from the mid-range for Martinez. And now Hayes finally has the lead. Uh, plenty of opportunities to take it back. And now Langley and Campbell Duncan back at the scorer's table. Here's Whitlow driving in, and he's going to pick up a foul. So Mitchell going to head to the line for two. Zay Anderson finally getting some fortune from the referees, picking up a, a free throw opportunity. Just the third team foul going against, or excuse me, that's now the fourth team foul for Hayes. Whitlow off the front of the rim there. Blackerby going to get a chance to rest. So is Armour. So Langley back in. Campbell Duncan back in. So four starters plus one bench point. Whitlow with three points so far in the afternoon. Goes one for two. 
So that'll tie the game back up, and Anderson going to call a timeout. I think that's a good call for Coach Pittsford. Just get some, uh, just take a breather. It's been a messy, messy second quarter for Anderson, and it's a tie game, 21 apiece. Going to go ahead and keep it here right now for Anderson. Nate Langley doing the bulk of the scoring, eight points for him, four points for Whitlow. Bennett Blackerby still yet to score. This is this team's leading scorer statistically this season. Whitlow has four. Gill and Francis both just have two, along with Page. Wagner has three, and Langley has eight. So you're going to need a little bit more from uh, those two scoring guards for Anderson, Francis and Blackerby. Usually both well into the teens uh, for their output. Just a combined two points through uh, nearly the entire first half, just two and a half to go here. So here come the Hawks. I'm going to let them walk on into frame. Here's Burks. Wagner defending. Now here's Martinez. Get it back to Bruce. Now Obara. Burks working on Whitlow, doing a good job cutting him off. He was, ooh, that's just, we're going to call a travel uh, foul on Whitlow when really he was just kind of out of control. Another good break for Hayes as that will be another foul on the floor. Neither team shooting a lot of free throws, but they are calling a lot of fouls. And it was right after our last time out. This time Hayes is going to go ahead and burn one. We'll go ahead and take a break with this one. Two minutes left in the first half. You're listening to Trojan Basketball on Vite. Vite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at Vite, Vite is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds. Really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson. She fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Back into the action. They've got Medeiros on the corner. Wagner pokes it away. He's got an opportunity to get a layup on the other end. And that's an easy deuce. And that's what Anderson needs. Mike Wagner with the second bucket of the game. He's got five points. That'll also give Anderson the lead back after briefly surrendering. 1.45 left to go. They've got Bruce in the short corner working on Whitlow. Now skip across to Burks. Francis doing a good job of closing out. Now into the corner. Campbell Duncan going to be defending. That's Martinez. Here's Burks driving in, spinning on Francis. He'll just pull it back out. And see, this is what I mean by them uh, short or elongating possessions, taking fewer shots, eliminating the amount of time Anderson has to score. But here's Medeiros. Kicks it back. That's a good find underneath, and they're going to call a foul on Francis. I heard the slap of the slap of the skin on that one, it looks like. Sounded like the leather of a ball almost, but the way Bruce is wincing, I don't think it was. It's a good hard foul from Francis. Puts Bruce on the line for two. 21-23. First one brick off the back iron, so it's a good foul. That was Anderson's last foul to give, so Hayes will be in the bonus from now on. And they've got that's the uh, that's the seventh team foul there. Starters back out onto the court for Anderson. One minute to go. He's got one for two. And now some substitutions for Hayes. Bruce, that's his first point of the game. Makes it a one-point game. 23-22. Press coming from Hayes. Here comes Francis. They get it to Whitlow. Now back to Jack. One minute left. Francis driving in. He's going to pull it back out. I think the Trojans might try and waste this whole last minute. Get the last shot right now. That's the plan. 45 seconds left. Francis just working his way around the perimeter. He gets it over to Wagner. Now Mike driving in, kick it back to Francis. We'll have to go get him. 35 seconds left. So how are y'all's, uh, how's y'all's morning going? Mine's going pretty good. Always fun to do a basketball game. This is not my favorite thing, though. Don't love the waiting game. This is why high school basketball needs a shot clock. But here's Francis. Defense coming up on him, causing some pressure. They get it to Whitlow. They'll kick it back to Wagner. Now... 
will do something. There's 11 seconds left. Wagner on the perimeter, driving in. He's going to get all the way to the basket, lays it up, and it's blocked. That'll be saved, and it'll go out of bounds, and that's how the half will end. So a yucky end to a yucky half of Trojan basketball. Yeah, you look a little bit sluggish after the quick turnaround, just about 13 hours between games. The game yesterday wrapped up at about 9. The game today got started at about 11. So just a tough uh, tough ask for the Anderson Trojans right now. But we'll get 10 minutes up on the clock here momentarily and uh, have some halftime. Actually, just eight minutes, so we'll have a shorter halftime, it looks like. But we shall see. I imagine they uh, try and add a little bit more to that. But with at half, Mitchell Whitlow has four. All right, so Langley leading the way with eight. It's Wagner with five, then Whitlow with four. Francis, Gill, and Page all have two apiece. So, yeah, in that second half, if, if Blackerby and Francis are uh, – Able to get it going. I think Anderson will be in a good position. But they lead it just by one after the first two frames. Going to go ahead and take a break of our own. Uh, when we come back, we'll have the start of the third quarter. I'd like to thank you for tuning into the broadcast today, uh, if you can. <laughs> but if not, we will have the replay posted uh, as soon as possible. We'd like to thank you for bearing with us with Trojan Basketball on Vibe. Interested, interested in campus? Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one of a kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, formerly KMAC Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals. The game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. What is Vibe Live? Vibe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vibe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at to find out more. Vibe Live. 
we bring your teams to you. Back in. We are in halftime right now. Anderson rocking a one-point lead at the break here in Buda. Not the best half of basketball for the Trojans. Hayes doing a good job of uh, matching up well and kind of eliminating a lot of what Anderson likes to do. They're not turning the ball over very much. Anderson can't really get out and run. So a lot of what Anderson is having to do is score in the half court. This game has been paced very slowly. Not a lot of shot attempts uh, for either side. And that's the way that Hayes wants to play it. And they are executing very well right now. It's been a struggle for Anderson. But usually coming out of halftime, tr trust the adjustments made. Coach Pittsford is an excellent coach, and he's got this team uh, humming on all cylinders for the most part. Just today has been a sluggish show in a morning game on the road after playing last night late. It's a little tougher, Anderson. Originally, this game was even supposed to be scheduled for 12.30, so that would have been even a little bit more of a break for Anderson. Could sleep in a little bit more, get a little bit more rest after playing in a game last night, although... The starters did a good job of getting out so early. They didn't play much in the fourth quarter, so can't be too tired. They're also teenagers. I don't think teenagers get tired. That's actually probably not true. They're probably all like doing finals and stuff now. They're probably all really tired. But we are ready to go here. Hawks coming in. Cold off the bench. They didn't get any shots up before the uh, the break here, so they're coming in cold. It's going to be Medeiros. You're not running with the same starting lineup here. Anderson, however, is. So here we go. We are underway in the third quarter. Got the stream back up, so hopefully you're able to join us. Trojans trapping and already showing them much better, and they're going to get Langley for a foul. So Anderson getting good pressure only to be bailed out. And we'll just start over. So we'll move it to the other side. So not quite the same. Clement's going to be inbounding here for Hayes. They get it in. Here's Burks going at Wagner. He loses it out of bounds, and they're going to say Mike tipped it. What game are you watching? I did I didn't see how Wagner could have gotten an arm around to poke that ball out. It looked like he just lost it. But nonetheless, it's a lob up top for Bruce. Bruce with one point there in the first half. He hands it off to Barker, who's got most of the team's points in the first half. Well, actually not most, quite literally half. He's got 11 of their 22 in the early, early going here. And as you can see, we're already 30 seconds into the half. Anderson hasn't even sniffed the ball. So this is what I mean, really slowing the game down. Just a lot of motion, a lot of passing. Kind of boring to watch. But it's effective. Here's Medeiros driving in on Blackerby. He'll give up on it, kick it back out. Burke's having to go up to get that one. I think Medeiros forgot who he was passing to. Here's Burks around the perimeter. Now back to him. He's going to pull up over Blackerby. That's a bad miss. But here's Wagner. Gets it to Langley. Now Langley going to be the one to bring it up. He crosses over, kicks it over to Francis. They get it to Whitlow underneath, and that's knocked away. Mitchell gets it back. He's going to flick it up, gets it back again, and finally gets it to go. Mitchell Whitlow sticking with it, opening up the scoring for the half. Anderson has a three-point lead back. It's 25-22. Now swing it over. Here's Burks on the wing. Now back outside for Medeiros. And I think they're going to get him for an illegal screen that's going to go against Clements. Yep. Got him for the hold on the illegal screen. And a lot of times those illegal screens are sort of the fault of the guy who's being screened. Well, being screened for, I should say, not the defender. Who run a little too early, the guy hasn't had time to set, and then it's a moving pick. Here's Francis into the corner for Blackerby. They need this one. That's a good sign for Ben and Blackerby. That's his first bucket of the day, and Anderson very quickly out to a six-point lead in the, uh, in the third quarter here. They didn't play their best half, but also they were just missing some shots, a lot of missed, uh, missed open looks and a lot of 
blown opportunities underneath the basket. And if Anderson can just limit some of those, they should come out of here with a win, albeit not a very pretty one. But here's Barker out on the wing. Barker, that's a good job by Langley because you know he wants to pull up. Three threes in the first half for Barker. He's the only one to hit one for this team. Burks is right behind him with six. So it's those two guys that are counting for nearly all of the points for, for Hayes today. And they are really looking to get the ball to those guys. See, they were trying to get it to an open look at a three there, but instead they'll just have to find Medeiros. Anderson tries to just get a good look, and that's another offensive foul. I think they're going to get Medeiros for this one on a push-off. Uh, I couldn't quite see the official's hands. It's either going to go on Bruce or Medeiros. Couldn't tell if he was holding up a, a two or a one. And if I was Anderson, I would just not miss any more shots today. Just that simple. Already two team fouls for Hendrickson, just one for Anderson, or not Hendrickson, excuse me, Hayes. <laughs> I've probably done that multiple times today. And Mitchell Whitlow up and under and one. You, can't, you, you just can't do that to me. You can't have two H Hawks teams in two towns that are right outside of Austin. You got Pflugerville Hendrickson. And now you've got Buda Hayes, although I feel like we were in Kyle. Anywho, that's a great bucket from Mitchell Whitlow, showing off a little bit of, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an adjective, like for acrobat. I cannot think of it. It escapes me. The free throw's no good, and it's knocked out, out of bounds by Francis. So it'll go the other way. They don't get the free throw, but Mitchell Whitlow gets the bucket. So two out of the three points ain't too bad. Now an eight-point lead for Anderson. Here's Burks. They get it to Medeiros. They're going to trap him. Wagner doing a good job of forcing a turnover from Burks. He launches it into the air and gets it back. That's another turnover force by Anderson. Now here they go. They've got an opportunity at a fast break. Mike Wagner avoiding the contact. The Euro step. The bucket. The timeout from Hayes. Obaro is there trying to draw a charge, and Mike Wagner just went around him. And now Anderson up to a 10-point lead. Coach Pittsford in those halftime adjustments undefeated. That's, that's not true. Um, but, you know, very good. A lot of good halftime adjustments. It's a full timeout, but we'll go ahead and keep it here, update you on the scoring totals. Jack Francis still only with two. Bennett Blackerby, though, knocking down that three to give him a ba uh, his first basket. That was three points for him. And Mike Wagner's up to seven. Mitchell Whitlow's up to six. Haven't seen Mitchell with a big scoring output. He's, he's been more of just a, a d defense and rebounds kind of a guy. He's a great rebounder, especially for his size. But we haven't seen him with a big scoring output uh, on a broadcast since that first game at Alamo Heights. Uh, and that was our first look at him. And honestly got me a little too excited. He just hasn't been uh, that offensive force. It's knocking down shots and getting to the basket. But... A lot of Whitlow's uh, baskets he creates. Um, it'll be like that last one was a transition opportunity, but a moment ago, you know, he uh, he got to the basket, missed the shot, got his own rebound, put it up, missed it again, got his own rebound again, and, and that, that's kind of the thing that Mitchell Whitlow's been so good at this year. But he's been a good piece. He's a good rotation player and a great starter for this team. Any team would be lucky to have a guy like Mitchell Whitlow, just some great defensive ability. Of the harp on some of the more unsung guys that you don't always talk about as much. Like just the dirty work players like Langley and Whitlow. You need two guys like that in the starting lineup as Medeiros. Uh, straightaway three is no good off the front of the rim, but this is another turnover as Blackerby takes it away, passes it ahead to Francis. Jack going to take it in, lays it up, gets it to go. Jack Francis' is second basket of the game, and Anderson pushes it up to a 12 point lead. It's a dominant showing here. They start the, uh, the third quarter on a 12. Uh, excuse me, an 11 to nothing around there, up by 12. Here's Martinez. It was 23 to 22 at the half. It's now 34 to 22. Anderson with a big lead. Here comes Burks, and that's blocked by Francis. It's another takeaway on the rebound from Wagner. Jack in transition, going to get to the basket, lays it up, and that's blocked. And Jack got hit in the face. Jack very clearly got hit in the face on that play. You could see him just the way, and that's a foul, of course. Jack got quite literally slapped in the face, a flagrant foul in the NBA, and then a little bump on the other end sends Burks to the line.
Well, no good. <clears throat> you know what they say. I'll just, I'll just leave that. Here's Burks, still looking for their first points of the half. He missed the first. Dang, makes it one for two. Wanted to see how long they could pitch the shutout. Uh, and it's four and a half minutes is the answer. Here's Langley on the other end. Layup is good. Nate Langley not wasting any time there. He's the first Trojan into double figures. Thirteen to one run to start this second half. Here's Medeiros. Now out on the wing, it's Martinez. They get it back to Burks. Burks crossing over on Wagner. Blackerby doing a good job of disrupting, and Burks is just going to throw this one up and get it to go. That's that's an example of bad process, good result. They get it to Blackerby. Bennett crossing over. Calling out the play. The play's one. Let's see what one is. They get it to Langley. Oh, they were trying to front him. That's not the right move for Nate Langley. As that, they didn't even have to worry about the play. They just rifle it into an open man standing about a foot from the basket. Nate Langley, his impressive stretch of games here in December continues. Let's see what he does against Moss on Tuesday. He had 14 yesterday. He's got 12 right now. It's Armour and uh, Price getting ready to check in for the Trojans now. Here's Burks around the perimeter. Burks with nine. They get it back to Barker, who's been held uh, pretty much in check since his uh, barrage of threes in the first half. He's only got 11. He hit three threes in the first two frames. Here's Martinez. Langley doing a good job of locking him up. They get it back to Burks. And this is the Trojan defense that we have been missing today. It hasn't been bad, but it hasn't been stifling. And this is uh, this is stifling. Burks working on Whitlow. And that's going to be three seconds in the lane. Another turnover. No defensive three seconds at this level, I don't believe. Did y'all see Kyrie's coming back? It's crazy. Didn't see that coming. Here's Wagner. Get it to Armour now. Ooh, that's a quick turnover for Anderson. Nearly saved by Francis, but Armour telegraphing his pass a little bit too much to Price in the corner, and that's going to be another foul. Looks like they'll get Whitlow for this one. Three team fouls apiece now in the quarter. 127 to go. Campbell Duncan now checking in. Armour going to check out. Now they got it into Hernandez. Here's Barker. Well out on the perimeter. Much better camera angle here today, too. I miss the home gym, I won't lie. It's a known commodity. I, I know what I'm getting. <laughs> Even if it's uh, not as high up as I might like, it's still good. Here's Medeiros all the way to the basket, and that is definitely a foul. Wagner helps him up. 13-point lead for the Trojans. And it looks like here in the third quarter we've done uh, a lot, had a lot uh, better reception, or better, uh, well, it's connecting more anyway. Don't know if anything's changed as Medeiros knocks it down as they're finally starting to uh, to get some points here in the quarter. But Anderson still on a hefty run, a just four points here in the quarter so far. We've just a minute left. Medeiros with the first free throw, that's three points for him. He goes two for two. Anderson now with an 11-point lead. It met Wagner all the way to the basket. Rattles in. And Mike Wagner wasting no time. And that's kind of been the difference. When Anderson tries to score quickly, they've, they've had a better job. It's when they try and play Hayes' game of, of really slow. And now if you looked at a time of possession, I'm sure it would be crazy skewed, especially here in this quarter. I think that Hayes has been holding on to the ball a whole lot. And once again, I'm very sorry if I keep saying a Hendrickson. I'm not sure if I am. I feel like I am, though. As that's a miss underneath as Anderson gets it. The their Anderson, not our Anderson. Their guy, not the team. So Anderson Anderson from Hayes gets the rebound and picks up the foul. <laughs> that's 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 a little annoying, isn't it? Wish I had first names. Devastating. Cash. Anderson opens up. 
his scoring. And once again, we're kind of getting that thing where they can't score except for getting to the foul line, like Austin in the first half yesterday. And kept them in the game uh, later than they needed to as they go one for two from the line here. Now Anderson uh, leading this quarter by 11 points. Now 20 seconds. This is plenty of... Uh, this is the exact amount of time you want if you're going to hold for the final shot, not a whole minute. It's like a regular NBA shot clock. 24 seconds when they got the ball back. Now there's 10 seconds. Wagner's going to get it over to Jack. Jack going to work on Bruce. Five seconds left. Jack getting in, and they're going to call a foul on the floor. So four seconds. Well, 4.8. They're going to get Anderson, the Hayes Anderson, with a uh, <laughs> Anderson number two. for the foul there. That's just the fourth on Hayes. So they get it to Francis underneath. The basket's good to go. <laughs> that inbound play is just so, so dumb. I love it. <laughs> it works every time. Just to just like have Francis body up somebody smaller when they get the switch on the screen and he just like puts his butt into him and sits down, takes the pass and just kind of tosses it in. It's a beautiful, just such a simple design. And they go to it so many times that you have to think it's design. They can't just be be going to that randomly it's it's, it's it's the most unstoppable inbound play ever just get it to your best player for a layup and now Anderson heads to the quarter break with a nice 14 point lead they win the third quarter by 13 points they hold uh, Hayes to just six points in the quarter it was 23 to 22 at half going into the fourth quarter it is 42 to 28 so third quarter one by Anderson, looking like the uh, the prime warriors with those third quarters. But before we head to the fourth quarter, want to take a quick break to thank our sponsor on tonight's broadcast. I guess uh, this afternoon's broadcast. It's finally noon. It's Academy Sports and Outdoors at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Back to school also means back to sport, and from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Langley with it up top. They're looking for Blackerby. Bennett has it on the wing. Jab step. He's going to take it. Hop step. Gets to the basket. Lays it in. What a move by Bennett Blackerby. Tough drive and a tough finish. 44-28 now. Bennett Blackerby, that's his second bucket of the game. Both of which came in this second half. He and Francis had just two combined at the end of the half, and now they've got 11 combined. And once again, Burks just kind of, it's the same thing every time. He's driving in. He's hes hes tiny, uh, so he, he gets jostled very easily, and they're calling contact on it every time. He's just kind of flails in almost. He's... And he's using it, and you have to. I mean, if that's working and you're trailing and you're having a hard time scoring, do anything that you can do. And they call it on the floor. But Burks has shown good touch around the rim. But Anderson doing a good job of not allowing them to get to the rim as Anderson from Hayes misses the shot. That's the 16th foul for Anderson, so they're out of fouls to give. But if they can just keep scoring, and I mean, they've, they've added a little bit of a cushion here. Here's Wagner to the basket. No contact. They're going to call another block. Hayes. This is the best shot blocking team I have ever seen with how few foul calls they get there at the rim. Here's Medeiros, gets it to Burks and that's over his head. He was wanting him to stay in the corner for the corner three, but Anderson can't get a layup off today without, get, without it getting blocked. Up to Francis. Hand off to Wagner. Screen comes from Jack to free him up a little bit, but Wagner working with Burks. And now uh, it's Black will be into the corner to Wagner. Wagner up top. Jack's got a wide open three. Instead, he's going to dribble in. Good closeout from Hayes, and that's just a, a little bit of miscommunication. He was looking for Wagner out on the three-point line, but Mike was kind of he – was, he was passing to the wing. Mike was kind of shifting to the top of the key. That's a turnover. And Coach Pittsford wondering why Jack didn't just take, <laughs> take that at the basket. Francis worrying about uh, – Worried about those assist numbers, it looks like. That's another turnover. Wagner comes and picks it. And that is a foul. Mike Wagner will head to the line for two. He was looking for the trailing Dale, but no need. 
And now we've got some substitutions. Once again, it's Fred Dale into the game, and it's Jackson Gill getting ready to check in after the uh, first free throw. Who do you think he's coming in for? Place your bets. Wagner short on the first. Anderson struggled a little bit from the foul line in these past couple games, but Jackson Gill comes in for Jack Francis, so take Jack out, put his son in. 16-point game, Mike Wagner makes it 17. That'll put Wagner into double figures. He's got 10. 45-28. Clements with it up top. He gets it to Burks. Burks going to drive in and another foul as he gets to the basket. There's more free throws for Burks. He's shot quite a few today. Nine points for him. That was Anderson's seventh team foul. So he goes one for two, missing the second. Blackerby picking up the rebound. And they're going to call Bennett for a push-off. I mean, come on. <laughs> Anderson's uh, killing him, so it doesn't matter. But call the game both ways. That'll be eight on Anderson, but no uh, free throws for the offensive foul. There's Burks. They get it into the corner for Medeiros. Swing it across. Barker hits his first shot of the second half. So finally, he's back onto the board. That makes it a 13-point game for Anderson. A rifle ahead. It's a good touchdown pass to Jackson Gill. They get it back to Wagner. Wagner driving in. Kick it back out to Blackerby. Wagner and Anderson. They've got to be careful. Can't let Hayes crawl back into this thing. It's just a 13-point game. They're leading the half by 12. Here's Wagner driving in. And foul on the pass. And honestly, I didn't see much contact on that one. We've got Wagner. And Hayes is going to call a timeout before Wagner can go ahead and set up and get the inbound in. It's 45-32, five and a half left to go. Let's we'll see if it's a full timeout. I believe it is. Going to go ahead and take a break with him. We'll be right back with more Trojan basketball. It's the fourth quarter. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vibe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vibe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vibe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe U today. Hey, high schoolers. I feel like I have most of those ads memorized at this point. Those are new, though, so I'll give me by the end of the season and I got gotcha. you. But, yeah, any high schoolers who want to work in sports, work here. That's where I work. I would love a camera operator, and I'll write you a letter of recommendation. <laughs> Here's Gill driving in. Good find for Blackerby. Way to draw off the defender. And now that's a three seconds called on Langley. This is a... Uh, mm. Burke's sprinting up the court. Now here's Barker. Driving at Langley. Floater is way off. Hit the side of the backboard with that. Now they get it up to Blackerby. 
Kick to the corner. Francis is open. He's going to try the triple. That's no good. Too strong. Langley taps it out. Can't quite save it. Here comes Burks. And Jack just takes it right away from him on the pass. Behind the back dribble. Crossover. Getting into it. Goes up with it. Can't get it to go. But he'll head to the foul line, and he's frustrated with himself. Just an 8 out of 10 play instead of a 10 out of 10 play, and Jack Francis is not happy. But way to pick the pocket. He'll head to the line. Jack just with six points here tonight. Well, this afternoon. I keep doing that. Anderson is playing Hendrickson tonight. No. No, they're not. Seven points now for Jack. Pushes the lead to 14. Anything they can add to it makes them a whole lot more comfortable. They've got Colin Page into the game now. For Whitlow, it looks like. And Jack goes short on that one. And Colin Page there to get the rebound right out to Francis. That's a heck of a play by Colin Page and coming in and doing exactly what he's supposed to do. <coughs> Causing havoc and being a spark plug, and they get it to Langley here at the top of the key. Langley facing up on Bruce. And it works his way around the screen. Now Page is going to get the hand off the Blackerby. Blackerby going to just pull up for it. That's no good. Rebound nearly taken away by Francis, and Jack has it. It's a jump ball. Nice effort by Francis to hold on to that thing. Medeiros had every right to that rebound, and he just went and took it away. Well, it, the possession arrow said Anderson, and now it says Hayes, but then they've put the possession arrow back to Hayes. So I feel like on the next jump ball, okay, they switched it back. Here's Medeiros. Well, either way, he gets the jump ball back on a rebound that was all, all but Hayes's anyway. Now they get it to Bruce underneath. Langley goes straight up with it, and they're going to call a foul. Golly. Now a 12-point game. Forty-six, thirty-five. We're halfway through the quarter, and Anderson turns it right back over. That's the one thing they can't do. As that's a bad pass underneath Wagner. That's out of bounds. Got a got a touch on it last. Now Medeiros, the one to inbound it. Just an 11-point game. We're halfway through the quarter. As Hayes has crawled their way back. Anderson, all the magic of the third gone right now. All about stops. 11. You get it out to him. He's the shooter. He's going to take a contested three. That's an air ball. Jack Francis making sure that was an ill advised shot. They get it over to Wagner. Mike is going to pull it back, and they're just going to try and waste time. At this point, I think that's the move is just try and use as much time as you can, and that's an ill advised pass from Wagner taken away. And now it's Barker. He's got 14 points. They get it to Medeiros. His shot from the corner is good. So we've got a timeout on the court. Anderson calls it. It's an eight-point game. And with a full timeout, we'll go ahead and take the break with them. We'll be right back with more Trojan basketball on Vite. Hey, buddy. You say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEBYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEBYPE.com.
It'll be Trojan ball out of the break. It's been a sloppy fourth for them, combined with fouls and turnovers. And it's now just down to an eight-point lead. Wagner gets it on the inbound, so that's a good start. Whitlow passes ahead to Francis. Jack kicks it ahead to Blackerby. Now they've got a two-on-one. Blackerby going to take it in. The floater's good. That's just a poorly executed press from the Hawks. And that's a basket for Bennett Blackerby, and a one that Anderson desperately needed. It pushes it back to a 10-point game now with just 3.15 three to go. Here's Medeiros driving in. Kills his dribble. He's looking for someone to get it to. He rifles it across the court to Barker. Now Barker driving in. He's going to pull up. Francis got another block, and Blackerby just taps this one out. A bad bounce for Anderson. Here's Burks. And, ooh, almost got a lucky bounce. That was more good defense on Burks. You never know when he's going to get the whistle, though. Pass ahead to Blackerby. Now here comes Anderson. Bennett to the basket, throws it up, and he's going to draw the foul. That's going to go on Bruce. Bruce doesn't like it. Breathe, everybody, breathe. Got it back to a 10-point game. Blackerby starting to take over. Now head back to the line. Seven points for Bennett. That shot's good. Rattles off the front of the rim and in. Eight points for Bennett now. All here in the second half. Francis scoring five points in the half as well. He misses the second. Langley, they're going to call Langley for an over the back. So, and that's free throws. They're really trying to keep this game going. Anderson can't, they're just not getting away with any contact. No contact. Uh, that isn't going to be called for a foul for Anderson. We're going to get Colin Page back into the game. First free throw is good for Obara. That's his first point of the game. Trojans lead it by nine. Wagner to Francis. Now Jack trapped in the corner. He's stuck. He calls a timeout. Jack was calling the timeout. He was calling the timeout as it was getting taken away. So I don't really understand the, the negativity coming from the Hayes coaching staff. It was a pretty clear call from, from where we were sitting right here in this corner. Anderson did have the, the timeouts to give. It's a full timeout for Anderson. Now with a nine-point lead here in the waning minutes, they need to get their heads screwed on straight if they're going to want to pull this out. Hayes is looking. They're starting to get hot. They're starting to knock down some of these free throws and some of these outside shots that just weren't falling there in the first half. But now just going to go ahead and take a quick 30-second break, and we'll be back with more fourth-quarter action for you. Hey, buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. And we're back. 2.40 to go. It's Anderson basketball. It's the starters minus Langley plus Colin Page. And they get it to Wagner, to Francis. Got to avoid these corners. They're really making them run. A lob ahead to Page. This will be a one on two as Page misses it. Gets his own miss. Rebounds it. Batted around. And that's going to be off of Whitlow. Ooh. Anderson gets a break. That was very clearly off of Whitlow. Finally, a break for Anderson. What? I mean, <laughs> right there, too. That was that was off of Anderson. And this one's tipped. Francis gets it anyway. Back outside Blackerby. They're not thinking about shooting. Now they're going to come hound Bennett. Off to Francis into the corner. Back to Blackerby. Now back to Wagner. Now Mike is facing a double. They get it to Francis in the corner. Jack's going to drive in. Kick it back outside to Blackerby. Ba Blackerby going to drive in. Back to Francis. Anderson playing hot potato and some keep away. Under two minutes to go here in just a second. 
Oh, and Blackerby was cutting, and that's a turnover. Just take the foul at a certain point. Well, they're subbing in defense for offense. It looks like Page and Campbell Duncan into the game. Campbell a little bit better out on the perimeter. A lot of unforced errors here today for Anderson. It's really the reason that Hayes has been able to stay in this game. And that's an illegal screen from Obara. Looks like he stuck his hip out. And now defense successful. We got the quick sub. It's Whitlow, for, Whitlow and Langley back in for Page and Duncan. Now exactly two minutes left on the clock. Wagner. Swing to Francis. Wagner. They just do get it across. Here's Whitlow into the corner for Blackerby. Bennett going to take it in. Takes the foul. Can't get it to go. But he'll head to the line. And now... Uh, I believe now they will be shooting two the rest of the way. I think that's the 10th team foul, or at least the ninth team foul going against Hayes. So either way, yes, that's the 10th. So they will be shooting two. So no uh, weird one and ones for Anderson that they would have to worry about converting. It's just all two shots from now on. 149 to go. Bennett looking to stretch it back to a double-digit lead, and he can't with the first foul shot. He'll get one more to make it 50 to 40. They'll do the substitution again. That one looked a little long out of his hands, but he rattles it in. That's a big shot from Bennett Blackerby. Makes it 50-49. So here we go. Burks loses it. That's off of his knee and out of bounds. Yeah. That's uh, Wagner blocked it, or Wagner kind of swiped at it, and then uh, it came down off of Burks' knee and out of bounds. That's the correct call. And it's Trojan basketball. They've got the substitutions back in. It's going to be Whitlow to inbound it to either Francis or Wagner. They get it to Jack. Now they're looking over to Wagner. Dangerous pass. They get it to Whitlow. Now it's an open layup on the other end for Nate Langley. What? Travel? No gather step? Dang. So a Trojan turnover. The gather step is a mystery. You never know when you get one. And Wagner, a little too aggressive, nearly got it from Adaris. Francis also tips the pass, so that kind of keeps the play alive. But Blackerby can't keep the steal. He loses it out of bounds, but anything to waste time. There's 10-point deficit with 80 seconds left. And this is, a, uh, this is one Anderson needs to go into conference play. Hate to drop a game that you've led by so much. And it would really just uh, it would be more of a situation of you losing than the other team winning if Anderson can't pull this off. But they're in good position now. Here's Medeiros. Screen comes. Medeiros just going to pull up. That's an air ball. And Burks can't save it. They've shot a lot of air balls today. Thinking about it in my mind, I think that might be the right call on Langley. He might have... Uh, but usually, once, you, once you're catching it into a step, they don't count that as one of your two steps. They call that a gather step. That's how Harden gets away with that like triple step back. But here's Bennett Blackerby just going to go right into the floater and get it to go. That probably wasn't the most uh, well-advised shot, but it went down, so it doesn't matter. Makes it a 12-point game, and that should all but do it. Is Medeiros going to launch? Can't get it to go. Whitlow does a good job of batting that rebound to himself, and here comes Wagner the other way. He's just going to take it slow, pass it up ahead to Langley. And now it's time for Hayes to start fouling. Wagner back to Langley. Now back outside to Whitlow. They're going to get it back to Francis, and with 30 seconds left, I think they're good to go. Up ahead to Blackerby, and another open layup for Bennett. They are just leaving the basket, trying to get those steals. And now Bennett, all of a sudden, 13 points in the half, does indeed make him the leading scorer for tonight's game. Who would have thought? that after having zero in the first half, Bennett Blackerby would come back and lead his team in scoring, barring a, a layup or a foul, and I don't think they will because there's just eight seconds left. So Anderson going to escape Hayes with a win. They're going to get out of Buda alive and have their whole Saturday up ahead. Bennett Blackerby out of nowhere coming ahead with 13 points. Jack Francis and Bennett Blackerby a combined two points in the first half and a combined math in my head 18 points in the second half so that's what so that's one of the things we talked about if those guys can just score more than zero 
then Anderson will be okay, but really got to clean up some of the turnovers um, and uh, the foul calls, I guess. Um, not sure how much of that was actually fouling. Of course, they're not all the way close to the basket like that. But Nate Langley also with an impressive showing. Three Trojans in double figures. Bennett Blackerby with 13, Nate Langley with 12, and Mike Wagner with 10. Jack Francis was right behind them with seven, along with Mitchell Whitlow with six. Jackson Gill and Colin Page were the only other Trojans in the scoring column. They each had two apiece. And leading it for Hayes was Barker with 14. That's a nice win for the Trojans. We'll be back for another game on Tuesday. Anderson going to open up district play with a game against the Lhasa Raptors. I really like to think that they did that on purpose. And it's good it's for Anderson to get a win here tonight after the or this afternoon after the win at Austin High last night. Not nearly the dominant showing that it was last week or yesterday, but still good for Anderson to come get the win. Uh, some nice defense and some nice play from Mitchell Whitlow, one of his best games in the past couple of weeks. Love to see him come along and get more experience. Trojans win it by 14. It's 54-40. to 40. I'd like to thank you all for tuning into the broadcast this afternoon. I want to thank our logo sponsors for Anderson Basketball, Harry Breen and Herman, as well as Encotech, and for us here at Vipe. It's the fine folks at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hopefully it actually gets cold at some point soon because then you're going to need some cold weather clothes, and there's no better place to get it than Academy. You can get the, the coolest styles from the best brands, like Columbia, Crocs, Levi, Carhartt, and the North Face. Crocs are coming back. Crocs are like ironically cool now. It's a great it's a great time to be a croc guy. So if you are a croc guy, bust them out. Rock them. Rock them to the next Trojan game. I'll give you a shout out live on the broadcast if you do indeed show me your crocs. Love those rubber clogs, and I love the Anderson Trojans boys high school basketball team. They win it 54 to 40. That's a two-game winning streak for the Trojans. We will be back at home. Home sweet home in Northwest Hills at Anderson. High school next, uh, this coming Tuesday, the 21st, for a game against Lhasa. That's the first district game that Anderson will play all season. Another good game from the guys. Another victory. Bennett Blackerby, 13 points. Langley with 12. Mike Wagner with 10. It's a good showing for the Trojans to come out and not play their best game and not get the kindest whistle and still come out with a double-digit victory. My name is Jack Farrell. Always a great time bringing you some Trojan basketball on a Saturday morning slash Saturday afternoon. Hope you all have a great uh, rest of your day and a great rest of your weekend. We'll be back Tuesday. We're signing off.